Um, welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited to be uh, moderating this panel. My name is Liza Donnelly. I'm a cartoonist for The New Yorker and a writer and lots of other things. Um, and I'm really happy to have these panelists on, on, uh, on stage with me. Um, two friends, and Lonnie's a new friend, so I'm happy to, to meet you. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read their bios and show, show you their work first, so you get a sense. If you don't know their work, then you get a sense of what their work is like. And uh, they can talk about it a little bit. And then we're going to have a dialogue, uh, hopefully for the last 20 minutes or so, uh, about what we do and about diversity, too, in, in some ways, because that's um, I think that's a, a subtext to this panel, because there's so much more diversity at The New Yorker than ever before. So um, with that, I'll start with the introductions. I think that's all I have to say there. So um, they sent me these, uh, these bios, so I'll read them to you. So Sarah, in the middle, Sarah Lautman is a cartoonist. She's the author of, of the collections The Ultimate Laugh and I Love You, it's two different collections, as well as the graphic novel Jason, which will be published next year. She has been contributing cartoons to The New Yorker since 2015. She teaches comics in the Humanistic Studies Department at MICA in Baltimore. Uh, uh, what's the official title, MICA? Uh, the Maryland Institute College of Art. Art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sophia mm -hmm. has been contributing cartoons to The New Yorker since 2017, and her comics have also been featured in MoMA Magazine, Catapult, Narrative Magazine, and elsewhere. Her first book, Radical, is a graphic memoir chronicling her year embedded with a freshman politician, out now through Top Shelf Productions. She also animates, writes, teaches, and does her dishes, unless she's really tired, in which case she leaves them in the sink. She lives in Brooklyn. <laughs> novel idea. Just leave them. <laughs> um, and Lonnie, last but not least, Lonnie Millsap is a New York Magazine cartoonist whose cartoons have appeared in The New Yorker over 40 times since his first submission in 2018. He published 10 books of cartoons since 2010 and is a, is a two-time Rubin Award nominee. Millsap has been a special guest or exhibited at countless comic, sorry, countless book and comic conventions since 2011, including San Diego Comic-Con, WonderCon, and SPX, especially SPX. <laughs> His work has been praised by noteworthy cartoonists such as Sergio Argones, Keith Knight, and Gary Panter. Millsap's comic, titled Bacon, is syndicated by Anders McNeil, Universal Uclick, and runs three times weekly on Go Comics slash Bacon. His last book is titled Hit It to the Mermaid and is available right now at SPX table W65. So there's our panelists. One book. <laughs> um, so we'll start. So uh, this is, the New Yorker was started in 1925, as you may or may not know, and that's the first issue. Um, I'll look over here. And uh, I wanted to do this panel because I wrote this book, funny, Very Funny Ladies, about the women cartoonists of The New Yorker. And I'm just going to give you a little background on that. Um, I wrote a first edition in 2005, and the second edition is out now because there are, I wanted to do a new edition because there are equal number of women drawing cartoons as men uh, now. Uh, when, I, when I started, there were only four of us. And uh, there were women drawing cartoons in the beginning of the magazine. Um, this is Ethel Plummer, the first woman who drew a cartoon for The New Yorker, uh, and it's a very not funny to us today cartoon, I think. Because we all get our sin now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Can you read it? Can you guys read it? Um, um, Uncle, it's a two, it's a two captioned cartoon, which they used to do back then. Uh, Uncle, poor girls, so few get their wages, flapper, so few get their sin, darn it. <laughs> Well, I think it's funny that it kind of looks like it says Uncle Flapper. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, but I'm not going to go through the history of the, ma of the magazine. Don't worry. Oh, can I ask I, a question, yes. Liza? Uh -huh. Does the character Eustace P. Tilly have a? Is that P. real, or am I imagining Eustace, that? Is, is there, there a, a P, P in, in there? there? I don't think there's a P. Wow. <laughs> Definitive. We're fighting about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this character is Eustace Tilly, which was designed by the designer of the magazine back then. Um, What's up with Rhea Irvin was his name. And I it's a it's a dandy. I'm not uh, there's a there's a story behind it, but I don't I don't remember it enough to tell it to you. He's a naturalist because he's looking through his right. monocle at a butterfly. butterfly. Right. With his eyes closed, that's not smart. 
<laughs> but the New Yorker started as a humor magazine. Many of you may not know that. So it was intended to be a funny magazine from the beginning. And cartoons always played a big role. Um, so uh, then I just wanted to show you um, the, the first that we know of, the first black cartoonist for the New Yorker was E. Sims Campbell. And I don't remember how many cartoons he published, but he did, he did a number of cartoons in the 30s, and he also did a cover. Um, I don't know much about him, because my book is about women, but um, there's a lot on the internet about him that you can research. But there weren't many black cartoonists. He was, he was it until uh, uh, um, Emily Sanders Hopkins came on board in the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember the date, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote about her in my book. She's the first black woman cartoonist that we know of at the magazine. So the diversity has not been, historically not been that great at the New Yorker, but it's much, much, much better now. So let's look at Lonnie's work. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read your captions, Lonnie? Uh, the navigation says they were wasting our time and should never have left home. <laughs> it's self-explanatory. Mm. <laughs> Lonnie, I love how you draw cars. They oh, look yeah, so my... cuddly. <laughs> <laughs> They're like pillows. Yeah. <laughs> Soft bumpers. It's like a nice pile of <laughs> Cars are hard to draw. They so are. Hard. I think so. I've gotten kind of into it. I've really embraced drawing cars because. Um, You're such a rebel, Sarah. I'm a rebel. I mean, I really think it was a COVID thing because I did just start to get into cars because I was trying to learn how to fix my own car. Uh -huh. So I looked at a lot of different cars and I got really into like compact SUVs but I, you can't buy a million compact SUVs. So, I mean, it sounds like I'm joking, but I just started drawing like lots of different cars because it was sort of a way to like um, be proprietary about them without spending That's a dumb amount of money on dumb stuff. <laughs> anyway, I love uh, drawing cars. She loves cars, everybody. Beep, beep. <laughs> I did a cartoon for the New Yorker about, uh, years ago, two little kids in a sandbox and, and the the little boy is saying to the little girl, I'm trying to remember it, the little boy is saying to the little girl, they're playing with, he's playing with a car. And he says, I don't think of playing with cars as a boy thing. I think of it as playing with a cars thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if it was like the cars from the movie Cars and the Sandbox, and they were playing with cars? What would the caption be? No, they're playing with humans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Blew my mind. I'm a professional. Yeah. <laughs> Here's seven hundred dollars. <laughs> That's how much they pay you. Uh, at us, at us. But there's a different like pay grade if you've been doing cartoons for. Say it again. I made a joke that I was going to give Sophia seven hundred dollars for her joke, but. Um, you can't afford my joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Yes, I'm sorry. sorry. I, really I, I, told, I, I love oh, nature. It, it, yeah, yeah. In full disclosure, I told them to interrupt each other and to make the panel fun and, and interesting. Um, but let's get back to the other. Oh, <laughs> that one just says, I love nature. I love this one. Yeah. Because um, my mother's friend loved that one. She, you know, she lives in uh, uh, um, Sylvia. <laughs> um, uh, you know, she lives in, uh, you know, yeah, Manhattan. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I think that's just her life right there. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> and you live in California, right? I live in L.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't been to New York in 30 years. So um, it, I'm probably due to meet the editor. At, yeah, at some are. point, but uh -huh. right now it's working for me. So. Here she is. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cartoonists sometimes have superstitions. Like meeting the editor, you know, you might jinx it. If yeah, you yeah. Her, she, <laughs> I know. I can never meet Emma ever. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Allen is the cartoon editor, and she started in 2017, right? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to chirp without sounding so damn cheerful. <laughs> that one's sort of self-explanatory. <laughs> There's not a lot of deep context in my cartoons. <laughs> Birds are supposed to be happy. Yeah. They sound happy. Anyway. <laughs> I seem focused. 
What? The birds, birds seem yes, focused. They, they do. Yeah. You know, they got to get a worm. Yeah, there's a lot to they do. Gotta, yeah. yeah. They're different things, chores. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of chores. All animals kind of seem like they're <laughs> Digging work. with their beaks, yeah. you know, <laughs> targeting my car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they have things. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a photo of the people who always tell me to get off the furniture. <laughs> so, because it's you know, while you're gone. <laughs> yeah. You have dogs? I, I don't. I've had dogs. Uh -huh. you know, so. Oh, but you draw yeah. so many lovely dogs. They choose those dog cartoons. Okay. <laughs> you know, oh. I don't say it in that yeah. minute. <laughs> so I, I guess I have an insight to that. Yeah, but you must yeah, just... I do submit other things. Yeah. You know, right. are, you, are you inclined to submit more dog cartoons? Of course. Uh -huh. You know, there was a, a nine week stint. You know, <laughs> the, the nine in a row, nine dog wow. cartoons in a row. Nice. So, you know, a few more weeks like that, and I'm going to you know, look for my new book <laughs> about dogs. <laughs> You're not kidding, right? You, you will have a book. You know, I'm gonna, I, want, yeah. I want Emma to be the editor. <laughs> you, know. you know who draws or a you. lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> or you. <laughs> Amy Wong, another uh, New York cartoonist. She has a lot of cats. She draws a lot of cat cartoons, yeah. and she doesn't, doesn't have cats. This is another cartoonist, Amy Wong, yeah. who does great cat cartoons. That's a secret. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doesn't leave this room. She didn't want anyone to know. Yeah. Yeah. Ruin yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People often ask me, do you, do you, do you draw from life? And, and clearly, this is not true. Um, that, so well, I, I, I mean, sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. Yeah, it, you know, I guess it's my idea of life, you know, the, 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 you know, the thoughts come from, you know, how I feel they would feel, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know the dogs get wild when people aren't around, you know, <laughs> um, uh, and I also know they'll eat you when you die. <laughs> Ooh, that's cats. So, yeah. Dogs too. It's whatever animal you have will eat you. <laughs> you call yourself the spokesman of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the. You think they eat? A, yeah. I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. Like, what are we gonna right. do? Like, yeah, stop as a there. species. Like, stop having dogs and like they're gonna no. eat us. No, they're not. Yeah. They love. Us. Oh, I forgot. Oh, cats too. Yeah. When they lick you, they're just tasting you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dark and marinating you. <laughs> Cartoonists are pretty dark people. <laughs> oh, there's a question. Are we... There is. Go ahead if you want to ask, but we'll actually stick to it later. Go ahead. But anyway. All right. <laughs> Follow the rules. That's good. Uh, can I order a margarita with an astronomical amount of salt? Um, that was the first one the New Yorker ever bought mm. from me. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I submitted one that was sort of in the running before that, but then they found one that was kind of similar and, and backed off. So this was important to me because um, it was the first one. It was mm -hmm. very exciting. Um, and I love margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's you can't, you can't have you. salt. <laughs> so someone has to. Yeah. How did you know something was in the running? I'm curious about that. She actually sent me a message. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, there was, uh, you know, I started submitting. It was really like three weeks of submitting before <laughs> they bought one, you know, but. Um, that's a good, that's a good run. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So she, you know, I sent some in. Um, I got some notes, you know, because my, my drawing style is kind of the people who come to my table know that I have sort of my, I have a comic called Bacon and it's all googly eyed and everything. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she gave some notes about changing it up a little bit so it doesn't look so Saturday morning cartoony. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had one that was in the running. She said close, but no, and explain why. Mm -hmm. And then she said, keep submitting. And the next batch was this one. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, um, and then the, this was the first one that I ever had in the magazine. Great. So. It's such a good composition. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Well. Yeah. Thank not, you. Not you don't know what goes on right on the other edge of that line, though. It's just a mess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just imagining the whale's body like hanging off this the bar, and then I, it's like a huge room. And water all over the yeah. place. Oh, they're in the natural history museum. Krill. Yeah. Oh, yeah, krill. <laughs> so. 
You like animals. Oh, yeah, frankly, I'm more of an outdoor horse guy. <laughs> yeah. um, this one's a, kind of influenced by um, some of my girlfriend's office parties. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi, Crystal. Um, but uh, That's so what is literally. her business? <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. What does she do for a living? <laughs> she actually is a uh, um, X-ray technologist at UC San oh, that Diego. Makes sense. <laughs> but they have like a lot of office things, mm -hmm. and and um, you, some of them are out there. Not that they bring horses or whatever, but you know that's mm -hmm. the very next step. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, wow. So far, I've earned 140,000 calories today. Um, it, this was actually influenced, but you know, my mother um, had a, I got her a Fitbit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's more yeah. about that than yeah. this. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, from up here, you can see everything. Uh, Your dogs are adorable. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm an optimistic guy in general, and and uh, this dog is very optimistic. I just figured, you know, you gotta you gotta sometimes make lemonade out of lemons. I mm -hmm. guess you know. <laughs> I didn't want to say it wrong, um, but um, yeah. Also, this is a very uh, New York friendly cartoon because that's what their apartments are like. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little tiny apartments. Yeah. And stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, oh, you have a penthouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Your home is nice. Yeah, an enormous house. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> but I do, I try to, you know, in every cartoon that I submit, um, I do try to address New York, mm -hmm. you know, in my own way, you know. Usually there's some buildings outside of the window or, uh, uh, or something very tiny. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, I don't think it's necessary to be New York centric for, your, for the New Yorker. I don't think they're looking for it. No, I just feel. You want to. Yeah, it's just yeah. my thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I try to put the Statue of Liberty outside every window <laughs> <laughs> every time I'm drawing an interior. But that's just my New Jersey pride talk. <laughs> because it's technically in New Jersey, <laughs> Liberty <laughs> State Park. <laughs> oh, so th this one, when I submitted it to, to the New Yorker, well, no, no, that I didn't. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is bacon, and and bacon is a little more absurd. Um, I would have loved to submit it to the New Yorker, but I don't think anything would have yeah. wouldn't have gone anything. Um, oh, I'm so proud. He's got down to one per day. <laughs> so. Have you, so you started submitting and within three weeks you sold and so were you submitting, what, what made you make that decision to submit Sorry, to submit. You know, I, I, I had people around me that I've, I've, I've met over, over time, a uh, different cartoonist. Um, you know, uh, I think Shannon Wheeler was like the first one to mm -hmm. ever bring it up. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I wanna make sure you're witnessing that I said his name. <laughs> because he, he was like, you never mentioned me, you know, but he, he's the one who brought it up. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe around the time, you know, probably a couple of years before mm -hmm. uh, Emily came. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of petrified to move forward. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I, I kept getting positive reinforcement from other cartoonists and stuff. And there was a point where um, I decided to give it a try. Mm -hmm. A guy named uh, uh, Lars Kinseth. Mm -hmm, um, I know. Yeah. yeah, he's a friend of mine, and, okay. and he, he sort of was the final push. And so I submitted then. Um, I guess she had an awareness of what I did already in doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it made it a little easier, sort of streamline things uh -huh. for me. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip through some of, your, some of these just because we're. No. Oh, okay. this one's pretty funny. I mean, they're all funny. I just want to get to get to the other yeah, panelists yeah, so yeah. I before we run out of time. Uh, should I? Um, uh, how the Superman thingy go? Um, Batman versus Superman: The Aftermath. Um, yeah, that's self-explanatory. So I don't need to. I think it's good you know. that cartoons, <laughs> cartoons shouldn't come with a, a an explanation right, sheet. Right. They, they should be. But Batman and Robin hang out, you know, and you know, 
they they have other things to do beside that. So mm-hmm. we're you know sometimes Robin does the dishes and <laughs> sometimes Batman does. I mean it just depends. <laughs> so in their tiny home with a right. sink, yeah, <laughs> right. In They're, the mountains. Yeah, and in, 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 it's in yeah upstate yeah. New York. Like yeah. it is so lovely. So, I think it's uh, vivid imagination sort of, working it. So it's awesomeing. It's all in the drawing. <laughs> There we're gonna go to break to Sophia. Yes, hello. Sophia. Um, okay, this one says there is food in the fridge and clues about the state of our marriage all around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Written from the perspective of a once babysitter. <laughs> yeah. What have you found? Like what's like the, like, I'll never tell. Like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta, tape, you, you know. gotta snoop, you know. You gotta snoop. Hmm. Yeah. Sketchy. Um, yeah. Oops. Go back. Go back. Oh, no, it's gonna go too far. Well, there we go. Uh, this one says, "Hang on, I know he's in here somewhere." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> searching for that rabbit. Mm-hmm. That's the lady in front of me at the grocery store all the time. <laughs> yeah, she's real. We all know her. I mm-hmm. am her. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have tons to add. In. Like there aren't there aren't necessarily good stories behind these. I can talk more about the process of them, I guess. But mm-hmm. I feel like they kind of speak for themselves. Are you, it looks like, I, I can't really tell whether you work on the computer or with uh, wash and pen. I work digitally, though I am trying to like push against that a little bit more these days. Um, mm-hmm. But this is drawn in Photoshop on a Wacom tablet with mm-hmm. different textured brushes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one says, I hear your 30, I, I see your 30, I hear your 30, I validate your 30. <laughs> <laughs> The drawing of that woman <laughs> on the left leaning over her cards is so good. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, initially she had a visor, Ooh. and there was an edit at some point in the finish. I sent a finish with the visor on her, mm-hmm. and I can't remember why, but we had to take out the visor. Oh. <laughs> it was like a last minute, like when it was meant to go to press or something. Oh. David Remnick was like, no <laughs> visors. <laughs> <laughs> Warring against a visor company. I can't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody want to explain how how, the, how they decide on the cartoons? Um, you know what I I, I don't know because they, I mean they, not not literally how they they do. never choose anything that I ever think they're gonna choose. <laughs> they, they've never chosen one that I thought. And I have surefire ones mm-hmm. that I'm like this is gonna be in the magazine, mm-hmm. and they will choose number six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's you why know. it's, you, so you send in a batch of a collection of cartoons and, and typically there's a deadline every week. Um, so if you're regularly submitting, you're submitting every week a collection of, I don't know how many you guys do. I do five. Five? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess an av- I actually haven't submitted a batch in almost a year uh, because I took time off to finish my book, which, which you can, like it's a, a contract position, so you are there's, which means that there's no uh, like obligation to really do anything if you don't want to. But anyway, uh, I guess when I was going regularly, like eight on average. Yeah, somewhere between five and ten. Mm-hmm. It's pretty same. normal. Yeah, yeah. same. Yeah. And then Emma, pre Emma, the cartoon editor, selects out ones that she likes or she thinks David will like, I guess, mm-hmm. and takes them to David Remnick, the senior editor. And it's the two of them. Maybe another person is there sometimes mm-hmm. to go through them. And David is the final word. He's the he's the final. He gets he gets to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the cartoon department, uh, the two editors, uh, Colin and Emma, will decide what is uh, gets published on web. Oh, the web, yeah. Yeah. So it's right. sort of a like a different voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe yeah. There's a daily cartoon online, which is. Less money, <laughs> but yep. it tends to be more topical stuff. That's the daily yeah. comic. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I just wish this could have happened when I was wearing a sports bra. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I think, was posted on the New Yorker cartoons account, and people took issue with the fact that she wasn't complaining about her clogs. <laughs> oh, which is also true. You can only complain about one thing at once. <laughs> that must have been hard to draw. I would find that hard. I would find that hard. The the background. Yeah. Yeah, I had and fun the, drawing And the it. foreground and the people running yeah. at you. That's, That's a good car too. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, a really good yeah. deal. Your cars don't look like pillows. The only one who draws cars. Right? <laughs> yeah, I looked up a picture of underneath a car. You probably cannot tell from here, but I did do some like <laughs> pipes and stuff, <laughs> like accurately. <laughs> I can see the lumpy part in the front. Yeah, and the lumpy part. <laughs> That's what they, my mechanic calls it that. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's noise coming from my lumpy part. <laughs> oh, another perspective drawing. <laughs> <laughs> like my face. <laughs> <laughs> this one has no caption. It's just a, a villain and a hero oh, wow. and, and a mouse on the tracks. Mm -hmm. It's just a scene. This one was like in my, I like keep a, a running note of potential ideas and it was just sitting on my ideas for a while because I just thought it's not quite a gag, it's not really a joke, it's more of a scene, mm -hmm. um, but I did eventually pitch it and I'm glad that I did because they liked it and I like it. <coughs> the dramatic lighting in it is like I'm great. Having, yeah, I've been getting really into to dramatic chiaroscuro lighting. Mm -hmm. um, this one says, that's strange. I remember it differently in a way that aligns with my worldview and casts me in a positive light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes cartoons are about saying a thing that you're thinking. So you're the, you're one of the women. Uh, <laughs> what did you expect from a budget airline? <laughs> that's how I got here. <laughs> oh, that's Spirit Air. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say the name. Oh, no, fuck Spirit Air. <laughs> Sorry to say the F word. Did you come by pigeon, Sophia? <laughs> <laughs> I came by train, actually, but I'm living in a fantasy part of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your fantasy is that you're on spirit air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I daydream, it's about being on spirit air. <laughs> um, this says, but you'll never meet anyone if you don't put yourself out there. <laughs> That's how I feel about dating. <laughs> this makes me think of the Raining Men song. I'm sorry, dating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wish it were Raining Men, yeah. This is more of like a, <laughs> a tornado. It's, tornado. It's a vortexing <laughs> men and other things, yeah. You choose difficult things to draw. <laughs> it's true. I, like to I, I tend to pick things that I know I can draw, so I don't have to. I think it's, it's kind of just, I tend to come up with the idea before I've looked at the page. So it's like, mm. if I came up with it and the concept needs this thing, then I'll draw that thing. Yeah. Do you submit finished work? No, it's rough. So yeah, so when you send in a batch, those are roughs, meaning it's not the final art style necessarily. And typically, um, like I used to when I was first getting started, they would be more close to what it would finally look like. Now that they have a sense of what I, my drawings look like, I will do kind of rougher first drafts. Are you, do you guys do the I same? I submit finished. Oh, you do? Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So I you didn't know them. until recently that you could. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Damn, lucky for that's, them. That's why you gotta go in and meet Emma. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's actually cool a really insights. good point. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I have a lot of extra cartoons now. Yeah, yeah. Truly. So. That, is, that is true. Um, <laughs> there, no, I submit sketches too. There is a Slack channel for cartoonists. Mm -hmm. that, um, are you on the Slack channel, Lauren? Uh, I'm not. Cool. You know, I, I actually, now this is gonna just sound like an old man thing, you know, <laughs> but um, I, I, I tried to create an account mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> one time and I hit a wall at that point and then I just stopped. <laughs> just you know, yeah, yeah. If you want to just like give one of us your phone in like 45 minutes from I now. I know it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to turn on the oven. <laughs> <laughs> 
a lot of information is, 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 is passed along. I mean, when I was starting out, we went to lunch together. I think maybe sometimes people still do that. <laughs> but we'd go to lunch and you'd get, not that you would talk shop during lunches. You, we didn't necessarily, but things like, you don't have to do a finished drawing, might, might be in the mix, you know, so you might learn things. I can't, I don't really have a facility with this thing, sorry. Okay, so Sophia, I asked, pe I asked them all to send me things that they, other, other than their New Yorker work, to, to send me things they wanted to talk about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wrote a book. It's here. It's called Radical. Um, and it's not New Yorker cartoons. It's about the year that I spent following around a politician in New York. Her name is Julia Salazar. It was her first uh, le legislative session, her first time in government. So I embedded with her team and uh, drew this book about it. So it was like a pretty dramatic year and a big departure for me from New Yorker cartoons. It's over 300 pages, it's nonfiction, it's got a lot of like government and community organizing information in there. Um, you know, working with bigger spreads, just speaking um, about the artwork of it, it was just a challenge in, in lots of new ways that were exciting and frustrating. Um, yeah, that's that project. I look forward to reading it. There he is. Yeah, it's <clears throat> Andrew Cuomo. It's a spread <laughs> of this very dramatic, uh, there was a march that took place in a blizzard by this uh, tenants' rights group. Great drawing. Thank it. you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an abstraction. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beauty of comics. Yeah, just more pages from that. We don't have to dwell. I love the bright, the way you use the page in various ways, like mix it up, it, you know, boxes and no boxes. And I love it. Yeah, it was fun. Sarah. Um, me. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, before I, we do this, I, to ask Sophia about um, your experience making a, like a, a, a really long narrative and how it was for you uh, in like figuring out that process after putting so much energy into doing um, like, like the tiny opposite of it. A teeny tiny miniature <laughs> flash fiction like opposite uh, yeah. of that. Oh, it was hard, but I want to talk about your work. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about it after. <laughs> oh. um, God, you know what? You're sweet, but I just got out of a long thing. <laughs> this is really a ripoff of um, a Far Side cartoon where um, it's, I don't know if anyone has all the Far Side cartoons memorized. But, uh, but she there's, does. <laughs> there's a couple at a, the breakfast table, and one of them's reading uh, the newspaper, and there's just a weird blobby looking alien thing, like smashed on the inside of the newspaper. And the guy's saying to his wife, uh, like, hey, have you seen this thing in the paper? <laughs> so it's this exact same joke. <laughs> That's really funny. Thank you. We're all thinking about the far side and Calvin and Hobbes all the time, I assume. <laughs> it, it, I wish it weren't the case sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, the Beast from Disney's Beauty and the Beast. And he's looking at the poster. Uh, what the hell? I thought we agreed on alphabetical order for the title. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't buy that, but I was always proud of, my, the way I, of, of how recognizably I drew Beast. <laughs> <laughs> I hate drawing an office chair. I got to that side of the room, I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks active. <laughs> active? Oops. Yeah, it's it's like in oh, yeah. So I'm, just no, like I'm sorry, <laughs> this clicker has a mind of its own. There we go. Um, <laughs> apartment hunting cartoon. It's not really standard procedure, but yes, I could let the other applicants know that you've licked every <laughs> surface in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> like when you have a cookie and you don't want anyone else to have it. It's a good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> Works. <laughs> For a cookie. <laughs> and you work uh, on paper, correct? I used to. I started um, doing all New Yorker cartoon stuff uh, on an iPad once I got an iPad, and it really made it go faster. Mm -hmm. um, but for different comics projects, I won't um, 
do it all digitally, it's just, like really just for batches because time is of the, es the essence. Do it mm -hmm. all uh, by hand, you mean? No, 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 oh, just digital for, uh, for New Yorker cartoons. Because I'm miserly about my time, you know? You don't want to give them so much of it. Fair. Um, oh, I really wanted to sell a giant snake handler cartoon. <laughs> didn't, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> giant snake handler number five, I've got my eye on you. Let's keep the fossey out of those hips tonight, shall we? <laughs> you know how in a ballet sometimes there's like a weird, like a big, like foaming. Okay, good one person. <laughs> <laughs> um, person inside jello mold. Someone's shaking the table. Please stop that. <laughs> very, very absurdist here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I just, I feel like mom would have wanted you to have the tits. <laughs> mm. Mm. <So> good. <laughs> mom was well endowed. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's in like a Snow White style glass. Um, <laughs> um, this is one that I sold like years ago and it never ran. So I just kind of like wanted to give it a moment in public. Uh, um, they're all, uh, I'm not gonna explain it. Oh God, does anyone have a hair tie? <laughs> Great drawing. Oh, thanks. Oh, okay. Oh, and here's um, some pictures of my books. Uh, I Love You is the collection from 2017. Um, Plain Bad Heroines is um, a prose novel uh, that Emily Danforth wrote. And I uh, was able, uh, after much negotiation with the publisher, to uh, make illustrations for it, which is wonderful, because I love nothing more than doing literary illustration um, for, like, you know, ideally, like, a. a like a novel and not a uh, like a, a picture book, which is pretty unusual. Uh, so that was a special project. Uh, and then The Ultimate Laugh is another collection of mine from 2014. Uh, Red Clover was um, a single issue uh, comic that I did that was published by Atomic Books in 2019. Um, and in 2020, hmm, it would have been actually really helpful for me to have a shot of the art in that in that comic book, but it's a long, thin, rectangular comic book um, about aging as a queer person that I made with Pressing Concern Books in 2020. Um, and then I published this little Rizzo zine that's called Dogs, 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 and it has no words, it's just drawings of dogs. <laughs> yeah. You've got competition, <laughs> Lonnie. It's just you and me. <laughs> My life is over. <laughs> Your life's just getting started. Long. I'm going to start drawing cats now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, these are a couple panels from a dream comic that I did, uh, I guess a couple years ago, for an online publication called Brick House. And it was a dream about the songwriter Mark Kozalek. Uh, his band name was Red House Painters. It's not like I'm a huge fan of this band. I just He just showed up in my dream. Um, and in the dream, I, I was him. And I was uh, thinking how great it was that I, Sarah, was now Mark Kozalek, mm -hmm. because uh, he had uh, recently uh, been, uh, um, there were like a bunch of like people came out as having been like sexually assaulted by him. And so in my dream, I thought to myself, oh good, like I now can control this person uh, who I am not, and I can prevent him from like hurting anyone or doing anything bad. Uh, and plus, I have a beautiful singing voice. <laughs> so in the dream, I was like kind of cleaning up with a mop and soothing myself by singing and thinking how it was great that I wasn't going to hurt anybody. Uh, and these are, uh, this is some art from the book that I just, I spent the last couple years uh, 
drawing and inking. Uh, and the title of the book is Jason. Um, and it's, uh, it's fiction and it's about this couple. I drew them on the left. And they are trying to act out uh, an erotic role play but they keep disagreeing on how it should go. Uh, and so, and the disagreements are where I tried to like, and you know, sometimes this wasn't conscious, but I tried to like interrogate things like, like ethics and like uh, intergenerational um, uh, dating relationships and um, like queer history. So these two people are trying to stay in character and just like have a sexy time, but they, they can't because they both have different ideas about how the characters should be drawn and uh, the choices they should make. So basically they keep, like the characters that they're trying to pretend to be keep getting fleshed out more and more and more until it's like a, a novel and not like, you know, <laughs> pornographic at all. <laughs> tried to make a little pornographic. <laughs> I like the green and yellow choice. That's really Thank nice. Thank you. Um, this is some more Oops. just, uh, oh, whoops. sorry. Drawns, drawn pictures. Uh, that's a, I, I love to make um, posters and flyers. Uh, so that's a flyer for an event on the left. I recently started getting into a little bit of 3D modeling. Uh, I, I don't know how to use Blender yet. I'm like working up to it. Uh, but uh, that's like one of my like experiments with um, a program called uh, Putty. Uh, and I really, I really like drawing jack-o'-lanterns, so I drew one of those. Um, and on the right, that's a, uh, a t-shirt designed for uh, the band Ed Schrader's Music Beat from Baltimore. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. um, I want to ask all of you, when you started drawing, before you became a professional, when did you start drawing and why did you start drawing cartoons? Me. You can go in order. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> as a professional, you said? No, before you were a professional. Oh, before? Um, you, you know, I was always, um, when I was younger, junior high and high school, um, I was always drawing on notes and stuff, you know, just around the edges of notes. Doodling. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, but it was kind of specific. I'm not like a warmonger or anything, but I was draw like a lot of tanks and cannonballs and stuff. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, you know. Um, but um, sort of graduating high school, and going to college, or you know, the year in between, the summer in between, I, I actually took a class, um, a cartooning class with Gary Panther. Um, uh, I was like 17, and uh, um, and he was like, he had a mohawk, you know, he was like 28 years old, and I was like, what? I didn't know what was going on, <laughs> you know, it was back before all that stuff, <laughs> you know, and uh, he inspired me to become. A cartoonist, uh, you know, by, you know, sort of putting what I do in notebooks, you know, sketchbooks and everything. I never did that before. Um, you know, always drew over all the years, drew, drew through college and everything. Um, I didn't have any specific goal. I knew I wanted to do it, but this was like kind of pre-computer, you mm -hmm. know, and so I had all these cartoons over all these years and sort of when, um, uh, sort of. I caught up to the times, or the times caught up with me, I was able to sort of put out my first book. And then after that, I, I kind of liked the attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kept doing it every year. <laughs> um, Sarah? Always drew, um, liked drawing as a child, uh, feels great. Um, uh, 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 did not go to uh, art school as an undergrad, uh, went to for English literature. Um, but I took some art classes, and uh, drawing was just, um, or, you know, I mean, before now that it's my career, was just an area where there's not a lot of pressure, and I can have fun and, and make things, and uh, it was great. And then I started getting, just having a more disciplined practice around it in my 20s, um, probably because I was on unemployment for 99 weeks around the recession in 2008, so I had a lot of time for uh, 
projects like bands and starting a drawing blog. And uh, I, I don't think I realized how unusual that was at the time. Uh, but basically, the United States government um, gave me a two-year artist grant in the form of unemployment insurance. <laughs> uh, and, and so fairly soon after that, I um, uh, uh, decided to go to grad school for art. Um, and then in a, a very, with a very disorganized trajectory, I um, um, made a career of it. Um, yeah, my parents are artists, so I was always doodling, though was not doing anything super professional with it. Um, I went to film school, and then I'll, I eventually started doing animation, kind of learning through tutorials on the internet, and was working in an anim animation field mm -hmm. for a few years before I started submitting to The New Yorker, which was kind of my first like real print uh, push. Um, and I've been taking it from there. Interesting. Um, well, I, have, I had a lot more questions, but we were running out of time, and I thought I'd toss it to the audience. Because I bet a lot of you have a questions for people. Liza, can you answer your own question? Can you say how you got started drawing? Sure. Um, uh, as a little girl, I, um, I was really shy, and I wanted to make my mother smile. And she gave me a book of cartoons by James Thurber. Mm -hmm. I started tracing Thurber's drawings, and it made her happy, and that made me happy. And so my drawing was always, start, it started out in, in that, um, capacity, making people happy. Um, and I think it's still there. I try to fight it sometimes, because it, it should be more about what you're thinking about. I, I mean, that's my, I, my ideal is, like, what do I think is funny? So, but that's how I started. And then, I, I didn't go to art school either. Mm -hmm. I taught myself. So. Thank you. Um, so uh, they've asked if you could go to the, mi the mics. There's two mics on either side. If you want to so ask a question, there's QA mics here. Um, because then everybody can hear the question, and then the recorder, the recording picks up the question. Um. Okay. Hi, uh, Ken Woodard from Kensington, just around here. And uh, my question is, have any of you done the art for the caption contest? And <laughs> You know, what, what is the relationship between the regulars and the caption contest? I mean, it, it just seems like, is it part of the cartooning, car professional culture there, or a separate thing? Just an interesting part of the magazine. Uh, I can answer. You know, um, my cartoons have been in the <laughs> caption contest a lot because they don't like my captions. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't... Yeah. That's, yeah, that's usually what it yeah, is. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> they, so I, I submit every cartoon with a caption, you know, and, and sometimes they say, this would be great for the caption content. <laughs> so, I'm like, okay. Bonnie, the ones they buy from me for the back, for the caption contest are usually, I don't know, I don't, maybe they don't like my caption, <laughs> but they're also kind of weird. They have like a weirdness to them, like yeah. a bizarre sort of like a Sarah Lautman cartoon, like something that's strange. Well, I never buy mine for the caption contest. <laughs> they don't buy yours? <laughs> no, no, it just never happened. Interesting. Do they give you the same amount of money if they fake the caption or don't? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they that's, do. yeah that's important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and and the, it was like the culture, I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure I understand the question. It, it's, yeah, I don't understand the question. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's, is it a complete sort of a separate uh, aspect of the magazine? It was an in initiative by the former editor, Bob Mankoff, right? Did no, it's David it? Remnick's idea. Oh, is it David Remnick's? Yeah. I am mistaken. But yeah, it's been in the magazine for a while, so yeah. yeah. I do, you know, there's um, the people that submit captions, though, have kind of like a database and all that kind of stuff to try to, um, to try to win. You know, they have like this network um, where, <laughs> you know, they, they try to get the best caption and stuff. I, I didn't know all that, you know. But um, I, I, most of us don't work that way. Am I correct? Do you draw, you, you don't, we don't do a drawing and then put a caption on it. Sometimes you do, but it's much more back and forth, right? Do you guys agree? Yeah, words, half half, images, I guess. words, images, yeah. back and forth. I mean, forth. it all, yeah. I mean, 
sometimes, sometimes I'll have a drawing that, that I'll, I'll sort of think of, of a caption toward, toward the end, but it, it's usually, that would be the one that they pick, <laughs> you know? But um, uh, it's all kind of one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like sometimes one. it's like writing a tiny little play and you think of a concept and you mm -hmm. like put the people where you need them to be and draw the background and then you write their lines and you maybe have to like revise that a little bit mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, all of a piece. It's organic. Yeah. And then people use writers too now so and they always have but there's more writers working with cartoonists than ever before. One more question. I'm sorry we're, we have to wrap up but I'll take one more question from oh, do we have two people? Um, Hello, thank you all so much for doing this panel. Um, in an industry that's incredibly siloed at some times, um, is there some kind of union or organizing for um, cartoonists? No. No. Within, I, it's, it's interesting to me that, that you all are revealing certain aspects of your careers that were not known to each other. So I just find that fascinating. But thank you all so much. Thank you. There is a New Yorker union, I think that's what you're gonna say, but we're not in it. Uh, I was gonna say we have a Slack channel. Like the Slack channel that yeah. we have is, <laughs> I mean, but, but sincerely because it's external to the New Yorker, right? That was an mm -hmm. initiative. And we used to go to the office together. There used to be a space to at least make contact with one another, which was a really vital part. It, I'm sure that the cartoonists in the room know it can be a quite solitary experience. And as you said, siloed, so the, the interaction there was really valuable. At this point, a lot of that interaction does take place digitally on the Slack channel. Um, and separate from that, the New Yorker does have a union for staff. None of us are staff, we're all contractors. Um, so freelancing effectively for the New Yorker. Yeah. And there are no other, well, there are other places you can sell your work, but there are just not that many. And they don't pay anywhere near as well as the New Yorker does. So um, there's just, there's no way to unionize from, from my, my perspective. It's, it's rough. I mean, it would be wonderful if, um, and I, I, don't, I don't think this is impossible. I don't mean my if, but like if uh, freelance cartoonists for the New Yorker and all freelance cartoonists and, and freelance writers and artists could um, find a way to have more agency uh, in our industry. And, and we don't, and it's a, it's a serious problem. It is an exciting moment. The New Yorker had not had a union before a few years ago, so this was quite a dramatic moment in the work history. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a really interesting moment in general for collective organizing. I'm sure some of you know about the strike that almost happened with Amtrak. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think we're all kind of swimming in the same soup on that one. So unfortunately, I have to end it here, but mm -hmm. um, thank, you. thank you guys for being here. <laughs>